good evening everyone and a warm welcome to regular batch on indirect tax the ca final so first things first my name is tarun raj you might be knowing otherwise you would not have joined so therefore uh, how many of you are appearing for november 24 i just wanted to know that cool and remaining are for may 25 correct fine so i don't know what you have as expectations from me but before that i want to make clear as to what i will be giving it to you so that uh, you know that will be wholesome and it will be sufficient so you have got uh, total five books as soon as you saw the books a mini heart attack you would have got i know that so but you know final level that much of intensive preparation is required and uh, don't go by lot of people who will be telling so you see tarun sir's uh, rocket revision in youtube that's it book you buy you will clear like that and all people will tell okay and that's true provided you have attended some classes otherwise it will not be see think of a situation wherein you are just watching the revision classes and a small that's it book you are getting and you are able to clear so things will not work that way so it is like we remember the dessert in the meal rather than what we ate correct so it's actually the dessert that students are remembering and they are conveying like uh, this will be sufficient like that but uh, you know i i don't believe in that so not that i am not getting money out of that so that's not the intention here but i'm just trying to convey to you that yes students will get benefited through the revision lectures but that will not be sufficient and this may 24 exam is an example of that because what has happened in may 24 those who relied upon only this revision lectures are fast track batch their feeling is like sir this paper is very difficult so we are not able to cope up with the exam paper the paper is lengthy and we are unable to write mixed reaction but on the other side i am not telling about my students alone i am telling about across the country as a whole okay but those students who attended the regular batches so like in depth who studied for them may 24 paper was like a cake walk it was very easy for them why is it so it is because of the preparation wherein the questions what they have asked in may 24 exam is breaking the stereotype they didn't ask any question which they usually frame so they just broken all the ways of asking and they have identified new ways of asking the questions you won't believe 40 marks is from amendments only 40 marks is from amendments for may 24 exam and even those questions what they have asked were somewhere deep wherein if a student is taking a binoculars and seeing into the book then only he will be able to identify so such kind of areas and all they are touching and this i have been warning the students from the beginning the day when new syllabus came see boss in new syllabus group 2 is only three papers in that also ibs is a open book wherein the student if he knows the subject he don't have to learn anything if he knows the subject in which page what information is there he will be able to cope up with ibs then what are the only two papers that we have in group 2 is dt and idt and you know about ici it's not something new so you know already in intermediate you have seen how ici is you know way of dealing will be so some of you might have uh, experienced that also maybe some of you might have cleared in the first attempt without knowing the torture but some of you might have seen what kind of torture that they give so always expect the unexpected kind of situation so at final level it will be more intense than that so due to that reason we cannot take things for granted because in these two papers only they are going to keep the check so that's why these two papers will be very difficult mark my words it's not may or november every attempt starting from may the standard has been completely changed for dt and idt exam 
previously IDT paper was very, 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 very easy paper. From 2020, I'm talking about. 2020, the paper difficulty started. Before that, 18 and 19 and uh, even 20 May was also okay, okay. Then November onwards, it started and 2024 is like, say, out of 10, the level of difficulty, I can say 8 out of 10. So that is the level of difficulty they are asking. So now, coming backwards. So if I need to tackle that paper, what is that I need? So you need to learn the subject properly. The only solution or a simple solution or the simple strategy for that is that you should learn the subject. Only when you learn the subject, you will be able to get good marks. Fine, sir. What is the definition of good marks? So what do you mean by good marks? Is it the 60? No. 60 is not at all a good marks. So we need to target 80 plus. Why should we target 80 plus? DT is not a bankable subject. In group 2, I am talking about. Group 1, fine. So we have, you know what is a like uh, type of preparation, etc. But when it comes to group 2, IBS and DT are not the bankable subjects because in IBS, they are asking questions on law, SCMPE, which you have not at all studied, which you will be completing as a self-paced online module. So self-paced online module and all people are easily able to knock it off. So I have seen LinkedIn posts recently, okay, last one week I am seeing, everyone is telling 90 out of 100, 80 out of 100 they are getting in SPOM. So then I don't know whether they are preparing and writing or somehow in fluke they are getting, I really, I don't know. So now when in exam they are asking the questions on law, SCMP, DT, FR, etc. and all, so it will be a challenge there because it is not again MCQ. Because in IBS paper, four case studies will be there in that partly MCQ, partly descriptive. In MCQ, somehow we will be able to do, but in descriptive, again, we cannot. So that's not a bankable subject. Even DT is not a bankable subject because that's the core of CA. So FR and DT is never a bankable subject. I'm not talking about, you know, generally. Generally, these two are amazing subjects. But from exam point of view, I'm telling these two are not bankable subjects either this way or that way. Sometimes the paper will be very easy and students will be able to cope up. Sometimes they will ensure that the student should not clear, like that they will be giving. So the only subject which is bankable wherein getting 80s is very easy if you are putting amount of effort is IDT. So you target 80 plus in IDT, definitely it is achievable, possible. So now, by attending this regular batch, will I be able to target that? Yes, definitely you can. You can. And that's why I have been provided with you these five books. So what are those five books? Three volumes of resource book. And that three volumes of resource book will contain the Bear Act and the analysis, lot of assignment questions and illustrations. And each and every page we are going to discuss in the class itself. So you don't have to read the book thoroughly. Now you just take your uh, volume one of the resource book. Volume one of the resource book, if you see, so we have this 10 chapters, 10 segments. At the end of each and every chapter, I gave the summary. So you just see page number 73 page number 73. On the top, you will see the page numbers. You can just locate page 73. So that page 73 onwards, the next few pages is only summary. Summary of what? Second chapter. So summary also I gave in the book itself. So as soon as the subject gets completed or the chapter gets completed, you need to just focus on the summary. So therefore, you don't have to read page number 1 to page number 100 like that. You don't have to. I will be discussing from page number 1. But when you prepare, you don't have to read everything. You need to focus only on that summary which I have given at the end. Done? 
So these three books, literally what you again prepare, I will be taking classes from these three books only. But when you prepare or when you do the revision, you need to read only the last few pages given at the end of each and every chapter. Done? Then. Thereafter, you need to put that into practice. How to practice? I gave a book. So, fourth book that is solved workbook. This solved workbook contains innumerable questions. Around some 800 questions are there, problems and solutions. So, it covers ICS study material questions, past exam questions, and even uh, MTP, RTP. Even I have given CMA final and CS professional exam questions also because sometimes what happens when ICA wanted to take the questions from you know different sources what they do is that they go with CMA and CS that past exam question paper is also open source now everywhere it is available they will take from that and they will be asking that's why I have given those questions also. So now the moment each and every chapter gets completed okay. So, taking class is my responsibility that I will do. Now, you need to revise. So, you will revise from the chapter end summary. Then you need to practice the questions from solved workbook. Some of the questions of solved workbook we will do in the class. Remaining questions you need to practice. But sir, when we are practicing, suppose if we are not able to understand that question, how the answer has been arrived, etc. I gave the QR codes also. Around some 300 questions, I gave the QR codes. You take your mobile, scan on that QR code, you will be able to get the answer explanation. So, this answer explanation, my video will be there. So, I will be explaining as to what is the answer for this, how the answer has been arrived. So, while practicing, if you have any doubt as to how the answer has been arrived, etc., you just scan it so that you will get the video explanation. These questions I am not discussing in the class because that is for your practice. Already the video explanation is there. Remaining questions in the solved workbook we will be solving. Done? And then, so this will take care of your problem solving also, question and answer. So, first from the resource book we will be learning the theory, analysis, etc. about the subject. Then you do the revision from the summary given at the end of each and every chapter. Then you put it for practice into this. Then the fifth book what I have given is the MCQ book. That MCQ book contains chapter wise MCQs. For every chapter I have given the MCQs minimum 30, maximum 60 for every chapter I have given. Plus at the end of the book you can see integrated case studies around some 40 integrated case studies I have given. So, because the type of MCQs that ICI is asking is not just the single MCQs like a question with four options, not that. They have changed the style. So, they will give a paragraph. For example, you can see that MCQ book somewhere at the end. You can check page uh, 298. 298, there is one question, page 298. So, this is how one paragraph they will give and this paragraph will run into two pages in ICI because the font, the spacing and all and after reading these two pages of case study, then there will be MCQs based on that. If you need to solve this MCQ, definitely you need to go through that case study. So, this is how the case scenario MCQs are prepared. So, that also I have given to you and as and when some chapters are getting over, we will be solving these case study MCQs also in the class. Got it? So, now your MCQ is taken care, question and answer is taken care and the discussion is also done in the class. So, that is why these five books and the purpose also I have explained and sir, how many hours? the classes will be 180 plus hours, easily 180 plus hours it will take and uh, the batch completion date. So, on the start date itself, I am just telling you as to when the batch will be completed. 
So, August mid. So, that already we have announced. So, suppose if you feel like, so in one month itself can't you complete sir? No, not possible. So, after telling this much, if you ask me in one month can I complete? Definitely not possible. So, it will be up to August 15. Now, this is what I can give you as a deliverable from my side. If you are following sincerely what I am telling, I can definitely assure you 80 plus in the forthcoming exams. So, if you are appearing for November 24 or May 25, definitely you can do that. Then, so first thing about the classes and the books I have given, explained to you and the second aspect is the test series. So, as you have joined this regular batch, you will also be provided access to the test series and how the test series will work. We will start the test series somewhere like June last week because a portion has to be completed, right? So, June last week we will start the test series and the entire portion of IDT is divided into so 8 tests, 50 marks tests chapter wise. So, 3, 3 chapters, 4 chapters like that I have clipped. So, this 8 test series and 2 mock tests, 100 marks mock test. This will be provided to you. Now, before each and every test, there will be a revision video. So, that revision video you can watch. After that, a question paper will be given. Every day, like every week, Saturday, the question paper we will be giving. And you can write the test. You do not have to submit the answers. Suggested answer will be released. And the answer explanation video along with the marking. If you write this, how many marks you will get like that. Self-evaluation, so you can do. So, you do not have to depend on me also for the purpose of evaluation that you can do yourself. I will give you a proper step marking. Like if you write this, how many marks you will get like that. So, answer explanation video also I will be giving it to you so that you can evaluate yourself. Sir, can we write the test later also? Any time before your exam, you can write because it is always available to you. Hope you understood. So, not necessary that you need to write the test along with the classes. Even after completion because you might be held up with some other work, article ship, etc. that I can understand. So, before the exam, you will take a preparation leave. Na? So, at the time also, you can write the test. It will be made available to you. The question paper, suggested answer, explanation video, revision video, everything will be given to you. Done? Then. So, as the revision video is made available to you upfront itself, so you can prepare from that revision video itself for your exam also. This one day, two days before exam also, this revision video will be taken care of. And sir, to do that revision video or we are preparing for from that revision video, from where we need to prepare. Already I have given the summary in at the end of each and every chapter. So, that itself is the revision that only I am going to explain. So, due to that reason, that revision video well in advance you will be getting. Anytime you are not able to understand the chapter, you can just go through the revision video. So, that like a 6 hour, 7 hour lecture, so I would have revised somewhere in half an hour like that. So, therefore, that will definitely help you out. But it will be little fast and it will be crisp. So, that for revision purpose, it will be sufficient. Then, next aspect about uh, your commitment. So, so far I have been telling about what and all I will be giving. So, sufficient, na? beyond this you cannot take. Okay. So, I can give but you cannot take. This is sufficient really. And uh, what is the commitment that I am expecting from you? So, here face to face students are there and online live some students are attending and some students will be purchasing Google Drive classes also. So, first I will tell you about uh, face to face and online live students you should be regularly coming to the classes. First week and second week you will be regular. Okay. Because this is not my first batch. I started, I started my teaching profession in the year 2008. 2008. I am an old fellow. Okay. 2008 I started and this is 2024. A number of batches I have seen and I had very good hair, now no hair, this, this long journey it has been. So, I know how you guys will be. So, first two weeks you will be regular. 
thereafter you will not be so but you should ensure that you are attending the classes regularly i'll tell you the reason there are a lot of google drive students because we can see from our data they will not be completing the portion even yourself you just introspect yourself you would have purchased fr afm dt classes of google drive are you listening or are you watching it regularly no some time back you would have purchased and maybe 10% or 20% would have been completed because the motivation will not come even if we get the motivation and see half an hour thereafter you will put a pause and you will see your mobile or something else will be there but when it comes to class two and a half hours you are going to sit in the class there won't be any other deviation because in the class mobile and all you will not be watching you will keep it in silent mode no disturbance and you will be attentive in the class and there will be interaction i will ask some question you will answer some wrong answer then again i will correct sometimes you will answer correctly so nice it will be so this is required so that in this two and a half months you are going to complete the entire portion and a student who purchases the google drive unless he has a time discipline unless he has a time discipline so what is a time discipline he is also if he think that he is attending the classes if he sit daily at the scheduled time if he is completing then only he will complete otherwise no one can complete got it so that's why you should be attentive in the class so that the portion gets completed asap and in the class itself the absorption will be like 70% trust me the absorption in the class will be 70% there are many students who immediately after attending the class they will forget about the subject one day before the exam they do revision and they will message me sir we are able to cope up with the exam superbly we wrote the exam yes it is possible because in the class trust me there is no other deviation you will listen to me and you will look into the book there is no other deviation your focus concentration everything will be great that's why I always prefer face to face classes or worst come scenario if you are unable to travel etc online live classes this is what my preference will be google drive only if the students are having time discipline otherwise it is like income source to the faculty only yes it's it's a very good income source to the faculties only that way i will put but the students are not really sitting and completing the portion they will extend extend and already 6 months will be over then i will say they will say sir we need two more months extension sir three more months extension like that they will be asking so i don't want you to do that that's why please attend regularly sir in case if we miss what should we do so why you miss the classes two reasons reason number 1 natural calamity yes in chennai it will definitely happen so we don't know which month what will happen here suppose if it is like rainfall or some other issue etc and all then don't worry we will share the youtube link with you and you can watch it from your place itself but the class will not be cancelled i cannot cancel the class reason being i also have the time schedule i have to complete the portion and thereafter i have uh, another batch also due to that reason i have to complete the portion so i cannot cancel the class but i will come somehow if it is raining also i can come so i will come and take the class those who can come they can come remaining we will share the link you can start attending from your home itself second reason say that you are not feeling well so you could not come to the class then what should we do we are providing a 40% of the lectures as backup so how this works so what is the number of hours i told you 180 hours na 180 hours into 40% so is what somewhere like 70 plus hours this access will be given to you means entire 180 lectures will be available with you like 180 hours of lectures will be available with you but in this 180 hours of lecture how many hours of lectures you can see 70 plus hours of lectures you can see whichever lecture you want you can see that even if you are regularly attending class also as a like again second time if you want to watch also you can watch that so the backup will be provided to you don't have to worry because you know it sometimes it happens this uh, firms and all they are basically sadist so they will be putting outstation audit they will not listen 
So if we say like, sir, I am attending the classes, that and all I don't know, you need to go, etc. Some torture will be there. So I can understand that. So that's why I just uh, push the batch as soon as possible because September now if I put gone, no one will be coming because everyone will be sleeping in the article ship office only, the CA office only. So that's why I want to complete it as soon as possible and uh, so backup is there, don't worry about that but don't take it for granted. Anyhow backup is there, so say for example office got over at 6 o'clock, in 15 minutes I cannot reach, so okay fine, today class I will skip anyhow backup is there, no that is wrong. 15 minutes, it may take half an hour, you can come late, it's okay. You can come late, even if 8.45 class, 8.30 also you can come. I don't have any problem, okay, <laughs> you can come, so sit in the class, nothing wrong in that. I will not tell why you came late, what else you have, etc. and all, no, I am not that boomer uncle, okay. So, therefore, I will not disturb you, you come and you can come and sit at any time, but don't walk out of the class, that I don't like. If you are able to come and sit in the class, sit up to the time the class gets over, don't walk out unless otherwise some necessary is there or health issue is there, you can do that. But don't walk out of the class because try to control yourself and attend the class because whatever portion that I am discussing the class, when you read it on your own, it will take double and triple time. For example, if I am able to complete a portion in one hour, when you try to sit and watch video or learn on your own, it may take three hours also. So you can control yourself and you can attend the classes, okay. Then that is the only requirement from your side. If you are attentive in the class and if you are regularly coming to the class, enough here. You can definitely get 80 plus mark what we are all talking about, done. So what is your target? 80 plus, uh, with confidence you should tell, yeah, still you did not get the confidence that you will get 80 plus and all, yes, 80 plus, that should be the target, okay, and come what may, you should be able to clear this attempt, November 24 or May 25, and the score we should not see, it is like, you know, it should be like uh, election result, how Tamil Nadu DMK election result, 40 out of 40. Now they said, and they got, like that the confidence should be there. Others will tell, but we should be, you know, confident enough like that, okay. So, but it should not be like BJP result, 400 they tell and they are getting less than that, very less than that, it should not be like that, okay. So, fine. Now, let us move on to the subject and I just wanted to give you the, you know, paper presentation like in the sense question paper pattern and what is your portion etc. Let us spend some time on that. As you know that your indirect tax paper number 5, paper 5, indirect tax loss, so you have two components in this GST, customs and FTP. GST previously the weightage was 75 marks, now they have increased the weightage to 80 marks. So the major marks is in GST. So your volume 1 and volume 2 is actually GST and customs and FTP is for 20 marks. Customs and FTP for 20 marks, that is your volume 3 book, okay. So if you see volume 3 book, it is small book only. So we will not take that much time in completing it and the weightage is also less and you will have a question like uh, question number 1. So paper pattern if you see, part A will be MCQ, that MCQ is for 30 marks. Whereas part B is descriptive and in this descriptive 70 marks, what they have done is that this question number 1, they have made as compulsory 
and this compulsory question is only on GST. There won't be any customs related question. This is for 14 marks. Now, this is actually a challenge for CA final exam because compulsory question, it is like your uh, CA intermediate tax paper. First question, compulsory question, computation of total income will be there. That computation of total income, they will not be asking a question only from capital gains or PGBP. So, that is all the heads will be connected to that question, correct? Like that, this first question, they are not framing a question only from one chapter. So, cumulative of 5, 6 chapters, they coin a question like input tax credit, place of supply, exemptions and time of supply. So, cumulatively they make a question. So, this particular first question is really a challenge while writing the exam paper. If really you feel the paper as a difficulty in this place you will feel. So, I am just telling you in the beginning itself so that our focus should be more on solving this type of questions. Okay. Then thereafter you need to write any five out of 6, oh, sorry any 4, any 4 out of 5 and this will also be same 14 marks each. Here what they have done is that they made it into 3 parts, part A, B and C. Part A and B they have given GST, part C is only customs and FTP and this customs and FTP is always a 4 marks question. This GST will be 5 marks question. So, you cannot ignore customs. Had it been like customs separately if they are giving 20 marks, fine 80 marks alone we can prepare and go so that out of 80 we can score some 65 like that you may think but not possible. Because in every question, part C will be customs, but the customs type of like uh, questions will be 4 marks questions, so small, small questions only. It will not be like that big computation involved. Then, so what is the ratio of practical and theory type questions in indirect tax? Only one question is theory, that to last question, question number 6 only one question that is 14 marks question, last question, question number 6 is only theory, rest and all is practical. Practical means how? Is it number based? Not only number based, situation based. Number based questions are more, situation questions are also there. Situation questions for example, they will give a situation like so and so person is going for appeal and this appeal is made to so and so authority, whether he can make the appeal to that authority. What is the time limit for making appeal to that authority? How much pre-deposit he need to make? Like that situation based question or a person has committed this offense. For this offense, what is the imprisonment that will be applicable? You understood. So, these type of situation based questions will be there. That also considered as practical only because it is nothing but application of provision only. Plus, pure practical questions also will be there like computation based questions wherein they will give transactions with some numbers and those transactions may be taxable or may be exempted and they will ask us to compute the GST payable. So, those kind of numerical questions will also be there. Done. So, this is your question paper pattern and your focus should be more on GST because of the weightage and customs and FTP as I already told you, your volume 3 book that is your uh, customs and first and second volume will be GST. From tomorrow's class onwards, you do not have to bring MCQ book and uh, volume 2 and volume 3. Okay, you have been provided with that beginning itself, but those 3 books you are not required to bring. You need to bring volume 1 and solved workbook. Solved workbook, it is because as and when we discuss certain provisions like uh, certain concepts, we can solve the questions from the solved workbook, that is why. Maybe some days we may not solve also, but do not blame me as to why you made us bring. Carry, no, nothing wrong. 
So maybe if you are solving, that's good only. That's why. Okay. So carry these two books. Then, so let's look into the first chapter. So this is your uh, volume one ka index. These ten chapters are there in volume one. Introduction to GST, supply under GST, levy and collection of CGST, IGST exemptions. time of supply place of supply value of supply input tax credit composition scheme in this intermediate level topics are this segment 1 segment 2 segment 3 also you studied at inter segment 5 segment 4 you did not study 6 also 7 you have not studied 8 9 but partly Value of supply fully you have not studied. Input tax rate also fully you have not studied. Only part you have studied at inter level, and composition scheme yes. So this is basically inter level portion. So that sir, are we going to skip this? No, no, no. We cannot skip this. We have to be strong in this. Then only that I told you na that first question. so that first question to solve you should be thorough with all these chapters so due to that reason yes again we will be learning from the scratch only i know that all of you have studied gst at ca intermediate i know that how many of you not at all studied gst at intermediate one anyone else online life okay two done so it will be beneficial for you so it is like you feel like uh, you are learning for the first time but others you know don't listen to others others will be telling the answers you should not feel like are yaar why i am not able to tell because they have studied at inter level these chapters and all so when i am asking they will sometimes tell the answers and they will be very much fast in learning provided if they remember otherwise you and they both are same only so because now many times students uh, will be telling no like sir at ca final level these inter topics are there so only final topics can you take class a separate batch you float okay and i'll tell the difference between a student who failed and who successful in exam is what you know the one who fail in exam will forget before exam the one who cleared the exam will forget after exam but as on result day both are same trust me you remember anything out of your inter portion in gst just tell yes no i will ask a question so no you cannot okay so therefore we will not read two three years back sir so how can we remember all those things those were bad days and uh, somehow we prepared and somehow we wrote we cleared and now don't ask me but ask us anything related to practical that we will be because in the article ship we would have done but theoretically concept wise no we are not and uh, therefore don't worry i'll take take it from the scratch and suppose if you feel like sir inter i'm strong sir i don't need i need only final level full focus sir that's why we have made a separate batch called as exam oriented batch in that exam oriented batch this inter portion and all i am not taking that much in detail i'll be just doing the like revision kind of but final level topics i'll be taking in detail so that will be like 130 140 hours i'll be taking that classes so that batch is available and uh, you don't want to shift that batch you attend this only okay but for those who feel like no no we are strong in ca intermediate like that they can do that but here i'll take from scratch itself okay so sometimes it will be monotonous like whatever you learnt only it will be repeated but don't uh, worry that will definitely be useful so the first chapter i am starting in this introduction to gst so this you know and this is not actually a separate chapter in your uh, ca final they have given it like a appendix in your book so in your uh, ca institute study material chapter number 1 is supply under gst which actually in our book it is second chapter second segment but this first segment they gave it in the study material as a appendix so
So some students who don't know anything about GST also might be coming for CA final for that reason they gave appendix. So I am discussing this but from this you will not get questions for exam from this first chapter no questions nothing no MCQ also. So first few basic aspects you all know that tax is a major source of revenue to the government and uh, this tax is divided into two direct tax and indirect tax. What is the basic difference between direct and indirect tax? Direct tax is progressive in nature whereas indirect tax is regressive in nature. Progressive means what? Higher income earning person will be required to pay higher tax whereas lower income person will be paying lower tax. Regressive in nature means what? Whether you are earning high income or low income you need to pay the same amount of tax that is what indirect tax is. And indirect tax basically what happens is that if I pay the tax I will not have the burden. I can in turn transfer it to the next person. So who will have the ultimate burden in indirect taxes? Consumer. The consumer of the product or service will have the ultimate burden. Simply to put it, I am taking classes. I collected the fees from you plus GST. I will pay GST to government but is it the burden on me? No, the burden is on you. I shifted the burden as you are the consumer you will bear the burden of GST. This is what in indirect tax it happens. And indirect tax is there in India from quite a long time but with different different names. What is the effective date of implementation of GST in India? 1st July 2017 is the effective date of implementation. Before 1-7-2017 we had old indirect taxes which was levied by central government and state government. So GST is it a new tax? No. GST is not a new tax. GST is by subsuming various old indirect taxes. So GST is not a new tax. So what are the old indirect taxes that got subsumed into GST? In the past there used to be some central government levies. So C G levy. What were they? Central excise duty. The central excise duty was on whom? Manufacturers. So those who are manufacturing they were required to pay central excise duty. Manufacturers of goods. And service tax on whom? Service providers. And then central sales tax. This central sales tax is on the people who are trading, selling the goods. And customs duty. This customs duty is on importers or exporters. Okay, the people who are importing and exporting were required to pay customs duty. So central excise duty is on manufacturers, service tax is on service providers and central sales tax is on traders and customs duty on importers or exporters. So this scenario during which time? Before 1-7-2017. What happened with effect from 1-7-2017? So this central excise duty, service tax, and central sales tax got subsumed into GST. Okay. But customs duty not got subsumed into GST. They kept it outside the ambit of GST. Reason being customs duty if you tamper anything the imports and exports is going to get affected that will have a direct impact on the foreign currency fluctuation. They don't want to touch that. So because the moment it comes into GST. So the law changes, when the law changes the imports and exports get affected. So that is going to cause a huge impact on the Indian rupee vis-a-vis -vis foreign currency. Due to that reason they just kept it outside. But can we expect customs duty to come into GST in future? Possible. Possible. So that was the idea. Actually initial idea was that only. So in future the moment GST law is settled. This they thought in 2017 but they didn't know that the law cannot be settled that easily. So because you know people who are at the helm of the affairs should be good enough. Okay. 
So I mean to say the finance minister should be good enough so that you know the law would have been settled. But when there is no clarity with respect to the people who are dealing with it, so it will happen like this only. Okay. So, sir, you mean to say that finance ministry is not good? Where did I tell the finance ministry is not good? I said, had she been good, it would have been better. Okay. So, therefore, but of course, now definitely she cannot continue as a finance minister. So, definitely there will be a change because it's a coalition government. Nah? They will not agree. So, whomsoever can become finance minister, no. So, definitely one uh, MP only they will be putting and uh, little bit focus they should be making and let us pray for that. Cust Customs duty is still outside the ambit of GST, they have not merged it. Now what about the state government levies, whether all state government levies got subsumed into GST, no. Only six specified state government levies got subsumed into GST. What were they? We had so now we are talking about state government levy. So entertainment tax, entertainment tax. This entertainment tax was levied by state government in the past. Don't write anything. You can just listen. And uh, whatever I am writing here is for myself and for you to see this. And this notes and all I will share with you on a daily basis in a Google Drive lecture notes but whichever things that I am asking you to write that you write this and all not required because it is already there in the book already I gave a book you do not create a volume number 4 ok so <laughs> do not write all these things just listen entertainment tax so was levied uh, in the past on actors so those who act in movies serials and all then uh, on this uh, dish networks so cable TV operators they used to levy entertainment tax in the past, but now that got subsumed into GST. Then luxury tax. This luxury tax again, same on uh, hotels, accommodations, hotel accommodations, luxury tax used to be there. Then advertisement tax. This advertisement tax on the hoardings, so on the publicity, etc. And next, entry tax. This entry tax was known as octroi. So, entry tax, whenever the goods are entering into a particular state, the state where the goods are entering, that state will be levying some tax that is entry tax. Then, value added tax. Then, lottery, betting, and gambling tax. So, this already income tax is there, no? yes income tax is there, but even indirect tax they have levied by the state government. Income tax we have winning from lotteries, bettings, horse races, etc. And previously state government also used to levy. That is where you know a lot of people used to make illegal bettings because income tax will take 30 percent and these people used to take 30 percent. My winning will not be that much. You understood 60 percent they will only take and that 40 percent is my investment to do the winning. You got it. So then what else will be with me? So that is the reason why. So people will be like making illegal bettings and this lottery or betting or gambling tax also used to be. These were the six indirect taxes levied by state government in the past. Now all these six got subsumed into GST with effect from 1-7-2017. Understood? So how GST is formed? All indirect taxes levied by state government except customs duty got subsumed. All indirect taxes levied by state government, no. Specified indirect taxes levied by state government got subsumed into GST. Can you tell me some examples of indirect taxes levied by state government not got subsumed into GST? Just think. Very good. State excise duty on alcoholic liquor, opium, narcotic drugs etc. There will be state excise duty. Even today state excise duty is there. Levied by state government. Indirect tax but not subsumed into GST. Then registration. Registration tax is there. Na? Vehicle registration, property registration etc. That also not subsumed. 
then sir entertainment tax is also there even today even though it got subsumed into gst because that entertainment tax is levied by local authority for example today if you go to a cinema theater there is an entertainment tax but that entertainment tax and this entertainment tax same same but different you understood so name only same but this entertainment tax is levied by state government and that entertainment tax which is levied today is by the municipal authority and corporation that is the local authorities are living which means local authority taxes not got subsumed into gst no example property tax municipal tax so like some road taxes so these and all not got subsumed even there is something called as mandi tax which is levied in karnataka on the wholesalers so this mandi means wholesale shops on that they need to uh, pay mandi tax and in maharashtra there is something called as local body tax these are all some things which are levied by local authorities or state governments not got subsumed into gst got the clarity then in this customs duty there used to be something called as additional customs duties two additional customs duties two additional customs duties that is cvd and sad cvd refers to countervailing duty and sad refers to special additional duty why countervailing duty you are importing a product when you are importing a product i am not talking about today's scenario before 172017 2017. when you are importing a product on that imported product there is no excise duty but the same product if you are buying locally there will be excise duty then which means it is better to import rather than buying locally that's not the intention of the government will you agree you are importing a mobile air when you are importing a mobile there will be only customs duty not today before 172017 2017. but the same mobile if purchased locally there will be excise duty there will be sales tax so the burden is more when you buy locally than import but that is not the intention so in order to counterbalance that means on import articles also there should be excise duty and sales tax then only imports cost will be more than the local purchase for that purpose they created a duplicate excise duty and duplicate sales tax called as cvd and sad just to, to counter effect so on locally purchased article there is excise duty on imported article also there should be excise duty so they created cvd on locally purchased article there will be sales tax so on imported article also there should be sales tax so they created sad so the cvd and sad is the counterbalance of excise duty and sales tax whether excise duty is subsumed into gst today yes and whether sales tax got subsumed into gst today yes logically then cvd and sad also should get subsumed into gst because cvd and sad is not separate it is nothing but replica of excise duty and sales tax okay now that is the first part that you should be knowing so this page 2 you can see first page i just gave so tax means what direct tax indirect tax and what are the major features of indirect taxes so it's a major source of revenue to the government will you agree from where they get more money direct or indirect indirect only because so it's a pathetic situation people who pay indirect tax don't know that they are paying indirect tax really so even a small uh, you know beggar purchasing a biscuit packet on the biscuit packet there is gst correct or not they don't know that they are contributing for the economy's growth okay so therefore people don't know the wider tax base is there whereas if you see income tax you know in this 150 plus 150 crore plus population now we have actually we surpassed china in this so because climatic conditions are so good that continuous production will be happening so therefore therefore the population has increased and uh, 150 crore plus single digit is income tax percentage here somewhere like uh, 8 percentage single digit this many people but only 8 percent are paying income tax but if you see indirect tax lot of people so it's a major source of revenue and wider tax base why wider tax base just now i said as more number of people are paying indirect taxes and i just wanted to ask you one question can there be both income tax as well as indirect tax on the same transaction can there be income tax and indirect tax that is gst on the same transaction possible 
yes there can be there can be example you are paying fees on that gst is there now from that fees i need to reduce my expenses book cost rent cost electricity cost etc now i get a profit on that profit i need to pay income tax same is a case of trader on sales they will pay sales tax gst and minus purchases they get a profit on that they will pay income tax so which means tomorrow don't complain that there is a double taxation there is nothing like that there is income tax as well as indirect tax on the same transaction are you getting this but exceptions are there sometimes there may not be indirect tax sometimes there may not be income tax those are exceptions but generally both these coexist okay you take a renting of immobile property on renting of commercial property there is gst and on the income from house property correct so on that we need to pay income tax of course while paying income tax we get these standard deductions of 30% etc interest on borrowed capital but we need to pay income tax also will you agree with me however exceptions are there example renting of residential property for residential purpose is exempted but income tax we need to pay even if it is a residential property income tax we need to pay this exceptions will be there but on every transaction there will be direct and indirect tax but broadly speaking direct tax is on income whereas indirect tax is on revenue revenue is gross the gross amount what we get whereas income is gross minus expenses that is income on that income there will be income tax whereas on the gross there will be indirect tax that's how usually it operates so tax is not on income but on revenue indirect tax is not on income but on revenue revenue is what gross collections whereas income is revenue minus expenses even this application of uh, income is irrelevant in case of gst in income tax it is relevant if you are getting some income and if you are donating you get atg deductions but if you get some money as a service income and you donate it even then you need to pay gst are you getting this say for example so there is one uh, actor that actor has acted in a advertisement because of which he got some 5 crores as a remuneration but he don't want to keep that 5 crores with him he want to donate it to one uh, charitable house for some purpose so for a charitable purpose he donated whether he is required to pay gst yes he need to pay gst so first he got money na first he got 6 crores so as he got 6 crores or 5 crores whatever it is he need to pay gst on that amount but sir he is donating charitable motive that is for income tax not for gst are you understanding this always we see the gross don't see how it is being applied understood and this aspect is very very important when we are discussing in the valuation because in valuation it says that whenever there is a transaction between related parties then in that case we will take the open market value but not the actual consideration involved in the transaction to put it in a example employer will be giving canteen facility to the employee at a discount rate yes you would have seen while doing audit uh, many places you would have went where in afternoon meals and all for 10 rupees 15 rupees and all in many factories they will be giving it to their workers and employees i have seen that so when i go to some factory wherein if it is afternoon time so the person the finance person over there will be taking me to the canteen there and uh, in a queue 10 rupees meals afternoon meals is 10 rupees so 10 rupees if we give one token and the token if you give one plate they will be giving and in that plate they will put rice everything and all so 10 rupees definitely it is cost more but why 10 rupees so because they want to create a discipline like you have to pay some 10 rupees and buy the food so that will be for the maintenance of the vessels etc and all that is not great money but what happens here is that as employer and employee are related parties so it will become a related party transaction and open market value gets attracted so that food will have a open market value na 
10 rupees even though the consideration is involved but 10 rupees is not the value the open market value so means what could be the value of that food maybe 80 rupees that will be taken you got it so why like that that's what i am telling you application is irrelevant whatever is the gross amount that grossing only we will be seeing for the purpose of gst you got it then next liability is on one person and burden is on another person already we know that it is regressive in nature and creates income disparities so difference between progressive and regressive i told you but this is humbug here it promotes social welfare as high rates of tax are levied on tobacco products no that's false actually just because high rate of tax is levied on tobacco products will people start stop consuming no whether anyone came to you and complained that our cigarette price has increased so i stopped consuming no no one will tell they will complain vegetable price is increasing they will complain petrol price is increasing but no one will come and complain tobacco price is increasing like that no but it is increasing really it is increasing how you know sir no it is general knowledge okay so it's a general knowledge we should be aware of many things so i am telling you that the tobacco price is increasing are yaar you won't believe the tobacco market is so big and so if you forget about south india the moment you go to north india you will know this the, the capacity of the tobacco market always they will be rubbing and putting something in their mouth so this is a usual thing and irrespective of whatever they are doing they need to chew the tobacco and smoking this is big market and the price is drastically increasing but even then no one will complain so this is really humbug na just because high rate of tax is levied on tobacco products so that it will create the social welfare no definitely it will not be the case and uh, rates are high is yes. so 160% is the compensation says on uh, cool lip cool lip you know cool lip you guys don't know no so cool lip is one uh, tobacco product so that cool lip uh, people will be purchasing lot of youth today is having this consumption and uh, 160% is the gst rate means 2 rupees product will be 2 rupees is the product 160% is the gst compensation says not 16% 160 more than double you understood so that much they need to pay but no one will complain ha huh? definitely no so this just theoretically they have given then excise duty already i told you who will levy excise duty central government on manufacture and uh, whereas there is something called a state excise duty also our friend has told which is not subsumed and that is levied on alcohol etc customs duty who will levy central government on import or export and there is even something called as cvd and sad i discussed cvd is to counterbalance excise duty sad is to counterbalance sales tax service tax again levied by central government on what services and uh, sales tax there are two types of sales tax which we have seen here one is levied by central government that is central sales tax another is levied by state government that is called as value added tax actually both are sales on sales only but this cst central sales tax is on interstate sale whereas value added tax is on intra state sale within the state sale happens value added tax from one state to another state it will be central sales tax even though central sales tax is levied by central government but it is collected and retained by state government remember this central sales tax who will levy central government but who retains it state government so central sales tax levied by central government on intra state sale but it is collected and retained by state government so cst revenue goes to state government and value added tax of course levied by state government so it is definitely collected by state government only then you can see about the discussion taxes subsumed into gst page number 5 so these are the various taxes levied by central government that is central sales tax service tax central excise duty and additional customs duty that is cvd and sad so about this cvd and sad i gave in the footnote you can just go through that in the footnote what is cvd and sad i have given 
customs duty is not part of gst but additional customs duties like cvd to counterbalance what excise duty and sad to counterbalance what sales tax are forming part of gst then these are the specified indirect taxes levied by state government, value added tax, purchase tax, tax on lottery betting, gambling, entertainment tax, luxury tax and advertisement tax got subsumed into GST which were levied by state government. Next. So now you understood how GST is formed. Whether India is having single GST model or a dual GST model. It is dual GST model. What is the difference between single and dual? Income tax is a single tax model. Who will collect income tax? Central government. And thereafter in budget, they will be allocating it to the states. That's where quite a long time, from last 2-3 years, there is a dispute between the states and the center relating to this. States are telling, lot of southern states are telling, we contributed more for income tax, but we are not getting that much in the budget allocations. You are allocating more money to you know Uttar Pradesh or Bihar etc and all we are not getting. So this dispute is continuous like it is going from quite a long time and there is no solution for this basically it is like you know in a family also not every child will be hard working now. Sometimes the elder will be hard working and the youngster will be jolly type. So it's normal that is how in the country also it is like that some states really contributes more particularly like Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Telangana, these are some states where lot of income tax they are giving, but some states may not be giving. So, this is an imbalance that happens. So, already there is a complaint that I am not getting sufficient revenue. Now, again GST also if it becomes single, states will not get anything. But today there is a guarantee in dual GST model, 50% goes to the state. The moment you pay 18% of GST on your lectures, 9% goes to central government, 9% goes to state government, but when it is single tax model, there is no guarantee that exactly 9% will come. So, there may be less than 50%, like 8%, 7%, 6% also they may give now. So, this is the reason why states did not agree for single GST model. But if you see, there are many countries which have implemented GST. So, not that India is the first country to implement GST. Perhaps, in the big big countries, India is the last country to implement because before India 160 countries already implemented GST. So, we were last actually and in majority of the countries where GST is implemented, they follow a single GST model only. Only few countries in the world follows dual GST. So, in that India has adopted from them that is Brazil and Canada. So, India adopted dual GST model from where? Brazil and Canada, you underline that. Dual GST model adapted from Brazil and Canada. Basically, what is dual GST model on the common tax amount or the common tax base? Both central government as well as state government parallelly levy GST that is known as dual GST model. So, example, you go to a restaurant and you buy food for 500 rupees. There is a 5% GST, but how they will levy 2.5% CGST and 2.5% SGST. So, on the common base, what is the common base here? 500 rupees. So, central government is also living, state government is also living, that is known as dual GST model. Then, why dual GST model is required? Already I told you, states needed revenue. Why states needed revenue? India is a federal country. When India is a federal country, states also have certain responsibilities for the public, correct? For the citizens, they have to do certain things. And to do certain things, when they have the responsibility, they need money also to do that. So, for that reason, states needed a revenue. For that, they went for dual GST model. And what are the types of GSTs that we have? So, so far we have seen the model of GST, that is dual GST model. What are the various types of GST? There are five types of GSTs we have. CGST, SGST, UTGST, IGST and compensation says. CGST, who will be living CGST name itself is there, central government, central GST, central government and state government is SGST, UTGST is what, union territory GST, who will levy, no central government, it is not levied by union territory, where from there is a separate union territory, union territory is under whose control, 
So therefore, who will be levying UTGST? Central government only. When central government is only levying CGST, central government is only levying UTGST, why there is separate GST just for accounting head purposes? Everything is expenses. Then why you prepare a final accounts? Wages, salaries, rent, taxes. Why you make that expenses you are bifurcating na? like that. Government gets revenue, central government. But from which source? From CGST how much? Through union territories how much? For that reason they are just creating separate accounting heads. And then IGST. What is the full form of IGST? Integrated goods and services tax. And who will levy IGST? Central government. But if you observe, everywhere there is a dual GST model. CGST plus SGST, CGST plus UTGST. Whereas in case of IGST, central government will levy and will they retain 100%? No. First, when there will be IGST on interstate sale, there will be or interstate supply, there will be IGST. So, supply is the transaction or taxable event under GST. So, supply, anything can come under supply. I am taking class is a supply and a pro person is selling a product is a supply. So, every transaction will come under supply. So, these transactions are divided into two. Intrastate supply and interstate supply. So, what is the difference between intrastate and interstate? If location of supplier and place of supply, these are the two factors. You can see the two distinguishing factors, location of supplier and place of supply. If these two are in the same state or same unit territory, it is known as intrastate. If these two are in two different states, or two different union territories are a state and a union territory then it will be interstate supply are you understanding so what is intrastate location of supplier place of supply in the same state or same union territory is known as intra interstate location of supplier place of supply is in two different states or union territories or state and a union territory that is interstate supply. In case of intrastate supply, if it is in the same state, the GST will be CGST plus SGST. If it is in the same union territory, it will be CGST plus UTGST. Understood the combination? First intrastate, location of supplier, place of supply, same state. So, what is the combo? CGST plus SGST. If it is in the same union territory, it will be CGST plus UTGST. First, what are these two factors are location of supplier and place of supply? Location of supplier self-explanatory. So, where the supplier is located. Usually, the registered place of business is known as the location of supplier. What if he is not registered or he is registered but providing services from an establishment elsewhere? Then that establishment will be the location of supplier. And what if he is providing the services over online? So then his usual place of residence will be taken as the location of supplier. Okay. This anyhow we will be studying again in place of supply chapter. But I am just giving you some light on to what is the meaning of location of supplier. Let us see the third aspect here. Usual place of residence. Today there are lot of YouTubers. Correct. So that has become a separate profession today. So, profession which do not require a qualification. So, that is basically is this YouTubers. And uh, what these YouTubers will do? They post some content. They make some video. There are different genres in that. Some people will be posting about, uh, you know, food uh, review. Some people will be posting about, uh, you know, what and all happening in their family. So, at what time, uh, you know, the husband will go out and what time the kids will go to school. So, what kids will be doing, what she will be doing, that is one genre called as vlogs, okay. And which trip they go, they carry one camera with them, everything. Thank God, bedroom the camera did not come, yet, okay. So, everything they post and it is very easy to know other person's life, very easy. So, we know at what time the husband will go, which office is going, kids are going to which school also we will be knowing. At what time that lady will be alone also we will be knowing. So, go there. 
put one stone on that lady so steal the money because in some other video she would have also posted purchase some jewelry etc and all and extension to that home tour gate <laughs> alma everything we will be knowing so therefore this uh, home tour videos basically these people are suppliers who is the recipient youtube is the recipient youtube is the recipient because youtube will make payment to them na based on the views etc they make the payment so now in this case what is the location of supplier they are not having any fixed establishment so their usual place of residence itself is taken as the location of supplier is it clear or not the usual place of residence will become location of supplier that's what i mean to say as online transactions okay then next place of supply so you understood what is location of supplier what is place of supply it's a technical aspect depending upon the transaction the place of supply will change sometimes location of recipient is place of supply sometimes the location of immobile property is place of supply sometimes the location where the services are performed will be taken as a place of supply so it differs example you go for a hotel accommodation you are from tamil nadu you go to karnataka you stay in a hotel who is the supplier hotel is the supplier you are the recipient from tamil nadu you know what is the place of supply hotel only karnataka only will be taken as a place of supply why because the location of immobile property will be taken as place of supply not the location of recipient i am taking classes for you okay in this case the location of recipient is a place of supply you understanding what if i don't know the location of recipient then location of supplier is the place of supply and sometimes location where service are actually performed example repairs repairs to the goods etc location where service are actually performed so like that it will differ and we have a separate chapter where we will be studying about what is the place of supply for each and every transaction which you don't have at intermediate level so you will be learning now at ca final so this segment number 7 place of supply there we will learn in detail for every transaction or goods or services what is a place of supply until that point of time you know place of supply okay so place of supply you determine location of supply you determine if it is in the same state or same territory interstate otherwise it will be interstate in case of interstate what is the type of gst inter inter igst and this igst is collected by central government but remember here the dual gst purpose is defeated fully it is going to central government correct or not but central government cannot retain because as a concept we have made it as a dual gst model so then what central government is going to do with this igst revenue are they going to retain are they going to retain no then they have to give how much they have to give 50% to whom they have to give state which state which state that's a question mark here for example location of supplier tamil nadu place of supply karnataka okay interstate so now the 50% will go to tamil nadu or karnataka consuming state what is the consuming state here karnataka not tamil nadu tamil nadu is the originating state consuming state is karnataka so that's why gst is called as a destination based consumption tax it's not a origin tax it's a consumption tax so wherever is the place of supply the 50% will go to that state sir then the producing state is going to get affected will you agree with me previously the sales tax was origin based tax like Tamil Nadu is a producing state will you agree with me there are a lot of industries in Tamil Nadu before 17 2017 anything which was manufactured in Tamil Nadu will not be consumed in Tamil Nadu will be sold to the neighboring states we will be selling to Kerala we will be selling to Karnataka Andhra Pradesh etc now the entire revenue was cst revenue interstate sale interstate sale in case of interstate sale what was the tax that was levied cst that cst was going to which state originating state that is tamil nadu 
Are you understanding? I told you CST even though levied by central government, but it is retained by the state government. So, it was fully going to state. Which state? Originating state. But in GST, what has happened? In GST scenario also, goods produced in Tamil Nadu will be sold in the neighboring states. But it became what type of supply? Interstate supply. When it became interstate supply, so the type of GST will be IGST. Who will be collecting? Central government. And 50% will be given to whom? Consuming state. Means 50% will go to center and 50% will go to the consuming state that is neighboring state. Then what the producing state gets? Correct. That is where there is a loss of revenue to the producing states because they change the GST system from origin based taxation to destination based taxation. Then many producing states did not agree for implementation of GST. They said no boss, if this is the case, we will get loss of revenue. Central government said do not worry, previously service tax we only used to get but now you are getting. But the argument made by the state is that the service sector is small. Service sector was not so big like today. So, previously the service sector was so small. Today because of the advent of information technology, internet etc. the service uh, like sector has increased. But where we had this big service sector in the past? In the past it was majority manufacturing and trading sector only. Na? So, state government said no that will not work out. Then central government gave a promise to the state government. What is that promise? Do not worry. If there is any loss of revenue on account of implementation of GST to the states, central government will compensate that loss. You understood? So, why there will be loss? You understood? Producing states, there will be loss. Why? Because GST has become a destination based tax. So, there will be a loss of revenue. Whenever there is a loss of revenue to the states, who is going to bail out? Central government is going to compensate to the states. Got it? With that promise, state governments agreed for implementation of GST. Okay. So, story over. Then, what central government did? We need to compensate the states. From where we need to compensate? Actually, out of if I promised you something, I have to pay out of my pocket, na? correct only, no. But what central government did is that they created a new tax for that called as compensation cess. Okay, it is like collecting from people compensation cess and contributing it to the states for the loss of revenue. So, already for a CGST, SGST, UTGST, IGST. Now, the fifth one came. What is that? GST compensation says. Okay. And this GST compensation says is for what purpose? To compensate the states on account of loss of revenue. If someone gives promise, they have to pay out of their pocket. Na? But what to do? So, they have just put the burden on all of us. Now, to what extent it has affected this sector now, automobile sector, I will tell you. Sir, I, you know, the car model, if you see SUVs, SUVs, what could be the X factory price for SUV? X factory or showroom? 10 lakhs. Okay, before adding all taxes, etc. and all, 10 lakhs, yes, easily you take a uh, Creta or uh, this uh, urban cruiser, high rider or tar, the segment is there. Na? I am not talking about the premium. Fortuner, that and all, I am not talking. I am talking about the mid range SUVs, 10 lakhs. And GST is 28% on SUVs. So, 2 lakh 80,000. Huh? There is something called as compensation says and basically SUVs and all will be touching 1500 cc correct less than 1500 means it is not a SUV here. it will be more than 1500 cc or at least 1500 cc and compensation says on them will be 22 percent how much 2 lakh 20,000 now this comes to 15 lakhs Okay, so when you buy a SUV, 
you get a budget car free okay yes where is that budget car inside the suv okay you will not be able to see that so 5 lakhs it is like one instagram reel i saw here so nirmala sitaraman was sitting somewhere in a meeting and one investor has asked us madam you have become my partner like this even the manufacturer is not getting this much amount so but government is getting 5 lakhs for a 10 lakhs car and on the top of this 15 lakhs registration charges insurance road tax etc and all and the on road price will come to 19 lakhs 20 lakhs are you getting this so now how do you think the automobile sector is going to take this that's where if you see 2017 to 2021 the automobile sector completely went upside down and many companies have left and some companies have become merged so if you take ford left the country and toyota and maruti suzuki they merged they started sharing the you know technology etc and all and hyundai kia etc and all also have made the pack so they stopped manufacturing literally they said no we will not survive and they closed down many factories also but of course after 21 things have changed the people understood okay this is the price of the car we have to buy this no other go because they started seeing the you know car worth is 19 lakhs they don't know this 5 lakhs we are paying for the car etc and all okay fine 20 lakhs is the price of the car we will buy it so that's how they have come to a mentality so again the automobile sector started reviving but this is the ill effects of compensation says now this 2 lakh 20 thousand unnecessarily is being collected on a person who is purchasing a car in order to contribute to the states for the loss of revenue are you understanding this sir how many years they will compensate sir five years from the date of implementation of gst what is the date of implementation of gst 1 7 2017 they promised to compensate for five years but it can be extended for a further period as decided by the council yes they decided they decided to extend it and it is now extended up to 31st march 2026 but is it going to be the final date again i don't know i don't know so maybe still some states may not have uh, you know revenue for sufficient revenue so that will happen like some states like bihar a no, lot of states are there in india like that who will not pay taxes and all if they if someone asks tax they will put a gun and all so yes still some states are there and these states will not and therefore it will get extended for a further period so why states are not able to get that there is a genuine reason because of covid 2020 to 2022 this time states revenue automatically fell down because of not having economic activity because what we were doing clapping lighting lamp etc and all what economic activity we did so only when we do some economic activity revenue will be created and taxes will be paid where we were sitting and clapping lighting lamp and uh, we were you know enjoying our life so therefore no tax revenue so naturally the state government revenues will be less so a huge amount was required to be paid so this is about this gst compensation says so now tell me how many types of gsts that we have five what are they cgst sgst utgst igst and compensation says now see this page number seven CGST on what intra or inter? Intra levied by levied and collected by central government. SGST on intra or inter? Intra levied by IGST on inter levied and collected by central government and 50 per 50 percent shared with consuming state based on place of supply. UTGST on intra, intra only and levied and collected by central government. Okay. And what are the union territories that we have 
for the purpose of levy of UTGST. So, can you tell me the Union Territory list? Delhi, okay. Pondicherry, ah. Okay. Daman, Daman, Diu, Dadra, and Nagar Haveli. This is actually one union territory. Previously, these were two union territories. Now they have merged it into one. So, Daman, Diu, Dadra, Nagar Haveli. Next. Ah, Chandigarh. Goa. No. Ladakh. Next. Andaman. Mm. Lakshadweep. Jammu and Kashmir. So, actually, Jammu and Kashmir was a state and because of abrogation of Article 370 to the Constitution, they converted Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories. One is Ladakh, another is Jammu and Kashmir. And these three union territories, that is Delhi, Pondicherry and Jammu and Kashmir, are called as union territories with state legislature, which means it will function as a state. It will function as a state. There will be chief minister, cabinet of ministers, etc. It will literally function as a state but it will be called as a union territory. So, it is union territory with state legislature. So, what is the type of GST that will be applicable here? It will be SGST only, not UTGST. Is it clear? Whereas, for these union territories, that is Daman, Diu, Chandigarh, Lakshadweep, then Ladakh, Andaman. So, these are called as union territories without state legislature. And the type of GST that is applicable here is UT GST. Understood? So, Delhi, Pondicherry and Jammu and Kashmir are treated like state only for the purpose of GST. So, the type of GST that will be applicable is what? SGST. Yes, Whereas other five union territories, what is the type of GST? UT GST. This information already I gave, you can see that in page number 4. In page number 4, you can see, see this box, even though Delhi, Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir are union territories, constitutionally they were given partial statehood on account of this, what GST will be applicable, CGST and SGST applicable. The other union territories are Andaman and Nicobar, Chandigarh, this Dadra, Nagar, Haveli, Lakshadweep and Ladakh for which UTGST will be applicable. Okay. Now. See this page number 8. Answer this illustration number 1. Location of supplier Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Place of supply also Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. What is the nature of supply? Intra or inter? Intra state. So, what is the type of GST? CGST and UTGST or SGST? Yes, GST. Why SGST? Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir is treated like a state because it is a union territory with partial statehood. Then next. Second one, nature of supply, intra only because location of supplier Ladakh, place of supply also Ladakh, therefore it is intra state. And what is the type of GST? CGST and UTGST. Why UTGST? Because Ladakh is not union territory with state legislature. It is union territory without state legislature. So, the type of GST will be UTGST. Then third one. So, union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and union territory of Ladakh. So, what is the nature of supply? Interstate. So, why? One union territory to another union territory or a state and a union territory. So, or one state to another state, then it will be interstate, correct. So, what is the type of GST? IGST, same way. Location of supplier Arunachal Pradesh, place of supply union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, nature of supply will be interstate. 
and type of GST will be IGST. Now answer me, in the third situation, will there be sharing of 50 percent? What is the place of supply? Third situation, what is the place of supply? Union territory of Ladakh. Union territory of Ladakh is under whose control? So, to whom they need to share? They don't have to share. So, 100 percent retained by central government. 100 percent to central government. Because there is no consuming state. State is not there. So, it is not a state. It is actually a union territory without state legislature. So, due to that reason, 100 percent to central government. Then, so in the fourth case, location of supply of Arunachal Pradesh, place of supply Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, interstate IGST. So in this case, what will happen? Will the 50 percent be given? See the place of supply. What is the place of supply? Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, which is actually treated like a state. So due to that reason, 50 percent to CG and 50 percent to Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Understood here? Then look into the next illustration. State which type of GST is levied in case of following transaction and who shall collect it? Location of supplier Chennai, place of supply Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu, nature of supply intrastate. So, what is the type of GST? CGST and SGST. CGST levied and collected by SGST. Okay. Then location of supplier Chennai, Tamil Nadu, place of supply Bengaluru, Karnataka, nature interstate. Type of GST? IGST. And who will levy? So, the first case, it is state government of Tamil Nadu. Okay, here, central government, will there be 50 percent sharing? Yes or no? Yes, because place of supply is a state and 50 percent to state government of Karnataka. Then, location of supplier Chennai, Tamil Nadu, place of supply Pondicherry, interstate. What is the type of GST? IGST. So, CG, will this be 50 percent shared? Yes, 50 percent to Union Territory of Pondicherry. Then, location of supplier Delhi, place of supply also Delhi, nature of supply intra. So, type of GST? CGST and SGST. CGST by central government. Why SGST? Because Delhi is a union territory with partial statehood. So, therefore, SGST by union territory of Delhi. Then next, location of supplier Chennai, Tamil Nadu, place of supply Chandigarh. So, nature interstate. Type of GST? IGST. Now, central government. Will there be 50 percent sharing? No. Why there is no? Because place of supply is a Union territory without state legislature, central government 100 percent retained. Then next, sixth one, location of supplier Chandigarh, place of supply Chandigarh. So, it is intrastate supply. So, what is the type of GST? So, type of GST will be CGST and UTGST. Why UTGST? Union territory, na? UTGST. So, therefore, CGST by central government, UTGST also by central government. Done? Then, look into page number 10. Look into page 10. Is it raining? Check no ones. Arambameva. Raining, sir. Okay. Fine. So, we will leave little early today. Don't worry. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> so, today I prayed and came that nothing should happen to this batch. It should go smoothly. 
etc. and all. God is not listening. What should I do? So, position of goods under GST in comparison to earlier system. See that. So, so far what we have seen is how GST formed and what is the model of GST and what are the various types of GST. Now, we are looking into what are the goods which are covered under GST and which are outside the ambit of GST. Okay. So, first on alcoholic liquor, there is no GST. You know that on alcoholic liquor, there is no GST. Why there is no GST? So, we need to go back to the history here. So, as soon as we got the independence, Mahatma Gandhi ji said that the alcohol should be banned in the country. Reason, Indians are dumb fellows and if they start consuming alcohol, now they gave space for Britishers, tomorrow they will give space for some other persons. So, therefore, let us ban this alcohol, then people will be proper, active. But, you know, the other people, uh, Nehru and all did not listen. He said, no, no, because that is going to contribute a lot of revenue to the states. So, therefore, uh, let us retain it. So, then they made in the constitution with a clear clarity that central government will not encourage alcohol. But state government, we are leaving it to you. If you want, you continue. And if you do not want, you, you do not want to, you can impose a ban on that. And uh, that is where it is moved to the state list from the union list. So, seventh schedule to the constitution is having three lists, union list, state list and concurrent list. You know that. Union list means where central government is having power to make law. State list means where state government is having power to make law. Concurrent list means where both central government and state government is having power to make law. So, this was kept, tax on alcohol was kept in the state list in the beginning. So, it continued in the state list. Now, if GST is levied on alcohol, what will happen? 50 percent will go to center and 50 percent will go to the state. So far, who was enjoying tax on alcohol? State. Now, they were not ready to share with the central government. No. Full for us only. One drop also we will not give. So, therefore, states did not allow bringing alcohol into the ambit of GST because of the loss of rare revenue. And finally, what central government did? Fine, okay. So, we do not want to levy tax on alcohol. So, alcoholic liquor for human consumption is kept outside the ambit of GST and it is permanent. It will never come into the ambit of GST. But even though there is no GST on alcohol, but the old indirect taxes continue to be levied on alcohol, that is state excise duty central sales tax and value added tax. So, the entire revenue will go to the state only. Sir, but CST levied by central government na, even though CST levied by central government, but it will be collected by the state government. So, on alcoholic liquor for human consumption, there is no GST and the exclusion is permanent and at present we have state excise duty, CST and VAT. Are you getting this? But without knowing it, lot of people will tell there is no GST on alcohol, but there is GST on medicines like that and all people will be telling. So, crap, lot of stupids are there. They do not know anything about the tax law and all. And uh, see, basically, the summation of these three is more than 28 percent. What is the highest GST rate? 28. But the summation of these three touches somewhere like 33 to 40 percent depending upon the state. It is good only, na? having more tax. So, therefore, uh, I do not know in which way they are telling, are they supporting liquor consumption or are they against liquor consumption, I do not know. But basically, it is a good decision. So, better not to bring it into GST. If it is brought into GST, the price will further decrease. Then petroleum products. Petroleum products is also outside the ambit of GST. Why? So, today, you know, you go to, uh, actually, Tamil Nadu is a better place for all these things like uh, interviewing people. So, in Tamil Nadu, in Chennai, some roadside, some people will be walking. Nah? You keep a mic to them and ask them. So, petrol price has increased. What is your reaction? It is all because of Modi, like that they will say. Yeah, I am not supporting BJP or I am not supporting Congress. Okay, I am neutral. Fine. So, I am just telling you, it is because of Modi. Are you are, how central government is only responsible for petrol price? If that be the case, why there is a different rates of petrol in different states? Simple logic na. Is there a different rates or not? So, central government is going to tell, oh, Tamil Nadu, 100 rupees, 
Karnataka, 90 rupees. Will they say that way? No. Means definitely state tax is going to play. But the blame is taken by the central government. Understood. So, because of this, states wanted this liberty. They want to enjoy the rates. And if they want, they can increase the rate on petrol also. So, they don't want petrol to be coming into the ambit of GST. But for this, central government did not agree. They said no. Finally, states have backed out of voting for GST. Then the central government came down and they convinced stating that, okay, at present we will keep it outside the ambit of GST. But as and when the council decides, all the states decides, we will bring it into the ambit of GST. This information I am telling from 2017, but still it didn't come. Okay, So, this exclusion is temporary. So, as and when it is decided, it may come. But until that point of time, on manufacture, we have central excise duty and on sale, we have CST and VAT. Okay. So, central excise duty only there, we do not have state excise duty. Then tobacco on tobacco products. On tobacco on tobacco products, so we have GST as well as central excise duty. Why? They want to collect more taxes for that reason only. On all other goods, there is GST. So, old indirect taxes is not applicable. So, what are the goods on which there is no GST? Two goods. What are they? Alcoholic liquor for, you can see the table. What are the two goods on which there is no GST? Alcoholic liquor for human consumption and petroleum products. And what are those petroleum products on which there is no GST? You can see the footnote I have given below. Crude oil. Crude oil is the raw material. Petrol, petrol also known as motor spirit. High speed diesel. Aviation turbine fuel and natural gas. These are the five petroleum products. So, what are the five petroleum products on which there is no GST? Five. Crude oil, petrol, high speed diesel, aviation turbine fuel and natural gas. And on all other goods, there will be GST. Then, whether old indirect taxes is continuing even today? Yes. Central excise duty is applicable even today, but limited to two products. What are those two products for which central excise duty is applicable? Alcoholic liquor? No. Petroleum products? Tobacco and tobacco products. Then, CST and VAT is applicable at present on what goods? Again, limited to alcoholic liquor and petroleum products. On tobacco, there is no CST and VAT. State excise duty anyhow not subsumed into GST. Is it clear? Even though central excise duty, CST and VAT got subsumed into GST, but it is continuing in case of few goods and these are those goods. Understood? Now, see the illustration below and you answer whether GST is applicable or not and what is the reason for your answer. Kerosene oil, what is your answer? GST applicable or not applicable? Kerosene, GST is applicable or not? Applicable. Why? Because it is not a petroleum product. So, yes, GST is applicable because it is not a petroleum product. Not a petroleum product. Then cooking wine, GST applicable? Yes. Why? Not an alcoholic liquor. Cooking wine is not wine. Cooking wine do not have alcohol content and all. Just because you see cooking wine and think that it is wine and do not consume, waste. Okay. There is nothing in that. So, cooking wine is not an alcoholic liquor. So, GST is applicable. What about liquefied petroleum gas? GST applicable or not? Yes or no? Is it a petroleum product? In the list of five, is it there? No, natural gas is different from liquefied petroleum gas. Natural gas is that CNG. In autos and vehicles they use, na, that is natural gas. Whereas LPG is not coming under natural gas. Liquefied petroleum gas is different. On LPG, there is GST. At home, cylinder is used. Na. Next time when uh, your parents are buying cylinder, see the bill. On the bill, there will be GST. Okay, So, there is GST on LPG. 
so because it is not a petroleum product then beer no why alcoholic liquor so but the content of alcohol is very less let it be less or more it is a alcoholic liquor so there is no gst same way cough syrup containing alcohol there is alcohol but even then there is gst why because that alcohol which is there in the cough syrup is not for human consumption so because it's a dry day liquor not available will we go to medical shop and ask for quarter cough syrup no na so that's not for you know human consumption that much quarter and all cough syrup if they drink no they will die that much they should not consume so cough syrup containing alcohol such alcohol is not for human consumption so such alcohol is not for human consumption due to that reason there is gst what about engine oil yes because it's not a not a petroleum product so this is about goods what about services whether all services are covered under the ambit of gst yes all services are covered under the ambit of gst we don't have any exclusion like this for services and from this table what are the two goods which are not covered under gst alcoholic liquor and petroleum products these are called as non taxable supplies so what are non taxable supplies under gst two alcoholic liquor for human consumption and petroleum products so this this column is irrelevant here it's just a alignment issue that column is irrelevant so only this we have done so we have also discussed so what are the various goods which are covered under the ambit of gst and uh, even types of gst everything we have seen now let's try to understand on imports and exports what is the impact what is the impact of gst on imports as i already told you on imports we have cvd and sad correct as cvd and sad got subsumed into gst in the place of cvd and sad we have gst called as igst okay so on import we have to pay basic customs duty customs duty we have to pay and we should also pay now igst and there is a surcharge called as social welfare surcharge these are the three levies that will be there on imports so what are they basic customs duty social welfare surcharge and igst okay so you can see this information in page number 9 on import of goods we need to pay basic customs duty so bcd means you can write there basic customs duty and igst we need to pay and sws refers to social welfare surcharge social welfare surcharge so this igst is not levied under gst law this igst is levied under customs law are you understanding this the provisions related to this igst on import is not in gst law the provisions related to this is in customs law are you getting this but gst igst is levied why igst levied reason i told you already as cvd and sad got subsumed into gst on import along with customs duties we should also pay igst then on export of goods depends the exports may be exempted or the exports may be dutiable under customs not all exports are dutiable under customs so if you need to know what are the list of goods which are covered under uh, you know dutiable you can see this so i'm just showing you the list of goods so this is the website in this customs if you see there is something called as tariff in this tariff
it's not there pa error maybe they are working on it i don't know not able to see this fine so if you see in this tariff you will be able to find actually uh, a list of 50 entries are only there so those 50 entries are only dutiable under export because india follows a restricted policy with respect to export not all goods which are exported is dutiable only few goods which are exported is dutiable and remaining goods and all are exempted but imports is reverse majority of the goods imported are dutiable we have only few exemptions because imports india follows a restricted policy exports india follows a relaxed policy due to that reason okay now if exports are dutiable we need to pay basic customs duty if the exports are exempted we don't have to pay basic customs duty is it clear and there is no social welfare surcharge so have a look into this export of goods if it is exempted no need to pay basic customs duty export of goods if it is dutiable we need to pay basic customs duty but social welfare surcharge will not be there on exports what about igst igst we call it as zero rated igst for the purpose of gst we call it as zero rated export of goods is zero rated zero rated means what sir does the rate is zero not that zero rated means the burden will become zero means we need to pay gst and we will get it as a refund so the burden will become zero so due to that reason it is called as zero rated you understood here so what is that you need to remember on imports we need to pay basic customs duty igst and social welfare surcharge whereas on exports there won't be any social welfare surcharge but there will be basic customs duty if such goods are dutiable if such goods are exempted we don't have to pay basic customs duty what about gst for the purpose of gst export of goods will be treated as zero rated zero rated means what the burden of gst will become zero that is the meaning of zero rated for the purpose of gst export of goods or services treated as zero rated supplies but not treated as exempted then now in order to further explain about zero rated etc like how the refund works i just wanted to give you a clarity about input tax credit so what is input tax credit in gst so it is like i'm making some purchases i'm just giving you one simple example to understand say this there is a trader there is a trader this trader is making some purchases this trader is making some purchases and he spent 1 lakh plus 12,000 as GST. Again, he is making some sales. For this sales, he collects 1 lakh 50,000 plus 18,000 as GST. Clear? Now, this 18,000 is the tax on output. So, this 18,000 is called as what? Output tax. Output tax. Then, this 12,000 is the tax on input. So, it is called as input tax. Now, the law says that this input tax we can set off against output tax so the balance is the net gst payable you understood which means how much this trader is required to pay as gst to government 18 minus 12 that is 6000 he need to pay as gst to government so this input tax which can be taken as credit and set off against the output tax so this input tax what we paid can be taken as credit and set off against what output tax which we are going to pay in future so that's how the input tax credit will work out now so what is input tax credit tax paid on invert supplies so this purchases i will call as what invert supplies because purchase is usually a term related to goods na 
So, services as well as goods, a common terminology we call invert supplies. Okay. So, what is input tax credit? What is input tax credit? Tax paid on invert supplies. What is input tax credit? Tax paid on invert supplies. Now, which tax? GST. Correct. So, what is input tax credit? GST paid on invert supplies. What you are going to do with that? Set off against what? Output tax. What is output tax? GST payable on outward supplies. Understood? Again, so what is input tax credit? GST paid on invert supplies. And what we do with that? Set off against GST payable on outward supplies. But this set off is a word which is a generic term, set off like that. But legally, we call this set off as utilized. Utilized, okay. And taking the credit is known as availment of ITC. There are two terms, two legal terms you should know. Availment of ITC, utilization of ITC. What is availment of ITC? Recognizing the input tax credit in the books is known as availment of ITC. Utilization of ITC means set off with its liability. That entity will have some liability in our tax liability. That is known as utilization. Availment of ITC means taking credit. Utilization means set off of credit. So, what is the concept of input tax credit? Repeat along with me. GST paid on invert supplies availed as ITC. Huh? GST paid on invert supplies availed as ITC and utilized for payment of GST on outward supplies. Got it? Now, so what is the net GST payable? Gross GST payable. What is gross GST payable? Output tax. Tax on outward supply minus input tax credit is the net GST payable. Understood here? Now, entry wise, accounting wise if you see, what is the entry for purchases? Purchase account debit 1 lakh or 1 lakh 12,000. Purchase account debit 1 lakh or 1 lakh 12,000? 1 lakh. So, we will never recognize input tax as past. So, recoverable taxes and duties will not form part of cost. You take either inventories in days or PPE in days. Both places this point is common, whereas recoverable, any recoverable taxes will not be forming part of cost. So, due to that reason, this input tax credit will not be added to purchases or will not be added to the asset. So, what is the entry for this? Purchase account debit 1 lakh, then. So, this is actually a receivable, now it is an asset. What we are going to do with this asset? We are going to set off with the liability. So, asset shows a debit balance. We will give one name for this asset. What is the name of this asset? Input tax credit account debit. Okay. So, purchases account debit, ITC account debit to bank or creditor etc. 1 lakh 12,000. Done. So, we recognize the asset for 12,000. On the other side, sales entry is what? Bank or debtors account debit 1 lakh 68,000 to sales. How much sales? 1 lakh 50 to GST payable. So, we create a liability here. We create a liability GST payable because liability shows a credit balance. Now, liability which is showing a credit balance and input tax credit which is showing a debit balance, we make a set off reverse. So, GST payable account debit. So, for credit debit, how much? 18,000 to input tax credit asset we are setting off. So, 12,000. What is the shortfall? 6,000 to bank outflow. You understood? So, this is basically how the accounting is being done. Understood? Then, what is the advantage of this to the trader? There is no advantage of this to the trader. The advantage is only to the consumer. If this credit is not there, what the trader would have done? He would have added 12,000 to the cost. And on the top of that, he will keep the profit margin. Am I right? He needs a profit of 50,000 yar. 
So therefore, now 1 lakh plus 50,000. Instead, what you will do? 1 lakh plus 12,000 plus 50,000 he will keep. So the cost to consumer will be increasing. That is the advantage of input tax credit. Other way, logically also you can see. Now I am the trader. You are the buyer. I got from you how much? 18,000. 18,000. In this 18,000, already at the time of purchase, I spent 12,000. So I am recovering the 12,000. So this 12,000 is nothing but recovery of my investment. At the time of purchase, I spent 12,000. Now I recovered 12,000 out of this 18,000. So what is left with me? 6,000. That 6,000 I am paying to government. Understood this logic? Anyway, you understand this input tax credit either normal like a formula you understand or through accounting entry you understand or through logic also you understand basically input tax credit is like recovery of my purchase cost. But I am just accounting it separately whatever tax I paid on purchases I am recovering from you and the remaining amount I paid to government. You got it? Now, so this is the concept of input tax credit system of credit in indirect taxes. You can see these four points page 10. Indirect tax shall be levied on every transaction. The originator of transaction shall pay indirect tax and recover it from recipient. Indirect tax paid at an earlier stage is available as set off against indirect tax payable at a later stage. The indirect tax payable at earlier stage is known as credit. Now what will happen if there is any excess credit possible? Not necessary that my sale should always be more than my purchases. I am purchasing 10,000 units but I am selling only 2,000 units. So definitely there will be some excess credit. Now what I can do with the excess credit? Carry forward. For how many years? 8 years. Ah, that is set off and carry forward. Okay. So there is no limit for carry forward of this input tax credit. Indefinite term. You can carry forward till the time your business is in existence. Okay, sir. Thereafter, if you shut down the business, ITC is gone. If you transfer the business, ITC can be transferred because ITC can be transferred in case of transfer of business from the transferor to the transferee. Just like asset, how we transfer, ITC also can be transferred and we have the provisions related to that. Section 18, subsection 3, input tax credit chapter, we will be learning the transfer of ITC. But if the business is closed, then the ITC will be lapsed. So there is no time limit for utilization of ITC. But time limit is there for taking the ITC. Availment of ITC, we have a time limit. 30th November of succeeding financial year or date of filing and return, whichever is earlier like that, there is a time limit for taking the ITC. But for utilization, there is no time limit. So whenever we have the excess ITC that can be carried forward to the future and it can be adjusted against future liability. That's what I have given. If there is any excess credit, it can be carried forward and that can be set off. What if there is a deficit? I don't have sufficient balance of credit. This example, 18,000 minus 12,000, the 6,000 rupees, we will be making payment. Okay. Now, there is one illustration on system of credit. You please go through this illustration so that tomorrow quickly we will discuss this and we will move on to the other aspects. So, this page I want you to go through. Just spend some 15 minutes to 20 minutes, not more than that. So, see this because today I am leaving you little early. So, you go home because it is raining and you see this illustration once. Just go through this illustration once. So, tomorrow quickly we will discuss this. Fine. And uh, what we have seen so far today, first, what how GST is formed, model of GST, what are the types of GST, what is the position of goods in GST and introduction to input tax credit and on imports and exports, what is the impact of GST. So tomorrow also we will be continuing with this introduction only and uh, hardly it will take some one and a half hour like that, not more than that and I will be starting tomorrow chapter number 2 that is only actually chapter number 1 in study material that is supply under GST. Okay. Thank you all. We will meet tomorrow. Take care.